How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the controversy surrounding Baltimore City State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby. Now, I've done some content about her before back in 2015, and there were two incidents back then that were pretty big. The first one was she was on stage with Prince at a Freddie Gray tribute concert. Now, I remember him. He was a guy that died in the back of the squad car, and that sparked the first wave of Black Lives Matter. She was on stage at a benefit concert for him. I'm not really sure why, but the optics of the state's attorney being on stage right there are pretty bad. But then there was another incident where she was on stage dancing at the Universal Circus concert with her husband, Nick, who was also the president of Baltimore City Council. Fast forward to today, 2021, the new controversy is she's upset with the local Fox affiliates coverage of her. She filed a complaint with the FCC, a three page letter. And if you want to see that letter in full, I'll link to it in the description box below. Now, before we go down on the rabbit hole in this topic, let's go ahead and roll the clip in this clip. You're going to see the station in question respond to her complaint and give you a little bit more context. After we get done watching that, I'll talk about what was said there. Then I give you the rest of my two cents, my deep detail analysis, and then I'll wrap it on up with a nice bow on top. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. Yeah, Maxine, following this letter sent to the FCC, I asked the city state's attorney, Marilyn Mosby, to sit down with her to talk about those allegations. Her office declined, and so far, other city leaders are staying silent. Baltimore City's homicides are climbing this year, while the city state's attorney, Marilyn Mosby, says she's no longer prosecuting crimes that she calls low level. Marilyn Mosby has stopped prosecuting pimps, drug dealers, and vagrants, but she's going after the media instead. Sean Kennedy, a fellow with the Maryland Public Policy Institute, says the letter to the FCC alleging Fox 45 News' coverage is, quote, slanted and racist, among others, speaks to the priorities of Mosby's office. Her priorities are so askew, it's unbelievable that the people of Baltimore have to put up with Marilyn Mosby's antics while their streets are a living hell. Today, Fox 45 News asked Mosby for an in-person interview. That request was denied. I asked a series of questions, like, what evidence do you have of the claims outlined in the complaint? Do you think it's appropriate for an elected official to use the federal government to attempt to silence a news organization? Do you believe in the media's right, protected under the First Amendment, to broadcast and deliver news to the community without government censorship or intervention? Questions ignored. Instead of answering, Mosby's office directed me to a news release detailing the complaint itself. We offered an interview to all of the members of the Baltimore City Council, Council President Nick Mosby and Mayor Brandon Scott. Ignored. I sent a series of questions to the leaders inside City Hall as well, like, do you think it's appropriate for an elected official to use the government to attempt to silence a news organization? Is it appropriate and ethical to use taxpayer-funded resources for a personal complaint such as this FCC complaint? Ignored by all except for Councilman Mark Conway, whose spokesperson says the councilman is, quote, unaware of the specifics in the letter and situation and thus is unable able to comment. While the leaders and state's attorney are staying silent, others are talking. C4 and Brian Neiman criticizing Mosby's attempt to silence the free press during their WBAL news radio talk show this morning. When you go after the press in this way for what you perceive as negative stories, by the way, she never mentions that they're inaccurate or that they're not factual. She says they're slanted. It's a losing battle to fight the press in this manner. Now, I just got a statement from the governor's communications director, Mike Ritchie, following this. He, Ritchie tells me, quote, add frivolous FCC complaints to the list of things the state's attorney is doing instead of prosecuting crimes. We're live tonight. Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News. All right. You saw that. You heard that. Now, there's a lot to quote unquote unpack here, as the cool kids would say. But I want to start with the elephant in the room. At least that's how I look at it as this is the most obvious thing that I've been able to pick up on. In this whole situation, it's funny how the left are now complaining about the media. Marilyn Mosby is not the first, nor will she be the last person on the left to complain about the media's coverage of them. All right. 
Now, when we did it on the right and it was a valid reason, I don't think her reason is valid. I'll get to that in a minute. But we actually had valid reasons on our side. The media were making up lies, pure lies. Remember the whole Brett Kavanaugh, Christine Blasey Ford thing? They put her on the cover of Time Magazine with no evidence, with no witnesses. It was just her saying, well, he did X, Y, and Z to me. And then there was the whole thing about, oh, believe all women, all this, that, and the third. Because it was a politically driven thing and everyone knew it. Even some of those that were on the left that had a little bit of a brain in their head still were like, hey, uh, do you have any evidence that she actually went through that, that he did that to her? It was a lot of stuff like that. The whole Russia, P Gate stuff, all that stuff from the left was a clear attack from the media on us. But when we say, hey, that's unfair, that's not right, they're lying. We got accused of, you know, being Russian puppets and, you know, we're bought and paid for the Coke brothers, all of that in the third. We got really just drug through the mud for sending up for the truth and not wanting the media and a Democratic establishment to lie on us. Right. But now on her side, she's trying to do the same thing that we did. But the problem is that everything that was said there from the media is true. There's nothing that's not true. Now, she might be able to complain about the way they're presenting it, but you can't say they're telling a lie. See, it's not like Christine Blasey Ford and Brett Kavanaugh or the Russia Gate. Those things have been proven false. But what the media in Baltimore and all over the nation are talking about are real things. Now, one of the key things here is some of the numbers that are coming from the Baltimore City State's Attorney's Office. They're talking about, oh, well, we got a 95% conviction rate Matter of fact, 98% conviction rate on narcotics, 85% conviction rate on homicide. We have all these things. We're reducing crime. We're reducing violence. We don't need to arrest for low-level offenses on drugs and pimping and pandering and things of that nature. But yes, they do need to arrest on those things. Yes, they do need to arrest on those things. They say they don't have a very high recidivism rate, but they don't. They're not telling you the full story. They're giving you, see, it's funny. The irony here is that they're talking about the media giving them bad coverage and, you know, telling them to have truths and they're racist, all this, that, and a third, but they're giving you have truths. They're not telling you the full story about what's happening in Baltimore. Okay. You're talking about one of the most dangerous places in the U S of A. And also the education is terrible. I did a video recently about that boy who had a 0.1 something GPA who was ranked in the middle of the pack in his class, how can you have a GPA of almost zero and be ranked like, like right in the middle? You're like a, you're the median score. The median score is basically a zero. How is that possible? Baltimore is like a failed state. So what she's talking about there, talking about, oh, the media coverage, you're trying to fight the media rather than fighting the crime, rather than fighting the poor education rather than fighting the poor reputation, you're fighting the wrong battle, but I digress. Now let's get back to those numbers. 95, 98% conviction rate on narcotics, 85% conviction rate on homicide. Well, if you're not arresting anyone, then you're going to have very high conviction rates. Or if you do arrest anybody and you throw the case out before it goes to trial, yeah, it'd be a very high conviction rate. I was reading somewhere they said that if you took into consideration all the murder cases that had been dismissed, okay, just straight dismissed, not because of a lack of evidence. There was one case as far as a drug, not murder, but same, it's, it's the same thing. Not as far as a crime is committed, but the, the, the sentiment behind it, the reasoning behind it is similar. Now, there was a guy that got caught with a car full of weed. I'm talking about from the window to the wall, from front, back, side to side, from the window to the, to the right. We all in the car, not just a couple of joints in this ashtray. I'm talking about like cartel type packing of weed. He got caught like that on the road and it was thrown out. Case dismissed. Not enough evidence. What? Not enough evidence. So the car full of weed is not enough evidence. They're not prosecuting crimes. So when you're not prosecuting any crimes, if you get arrested, it's going to get thrown out. If an officer pulls you over and you got you know, um, a thousand pounds of weed in your pickup truck in the, in the bed, it's clearly visible and open. You might not even get arrested or let alone a ticket because what's the point? It'll get thrown out anyway. So then they could say, okay, we've reduced our arrest 
for drugs because you're not arresting anybody. And we've increased our conviction rate. Yeah, because you're cherry picking cases to prosecute slam dunks that are wide open. Like if it's a guy shooting heroin in the police station, you can go in and convict that. I mean, you can't really deny it. It's on camera. Officers saw it. I mean, it's a slam dunk. But if it's a guy riding down the interstate with a trunk full of heroin, you might let it go. It depends on the situation. You're only going to just, you're cherry picking cases to try and convict. Here's another number for you that kind of drives the whole point home. Since Marilyn Mosby came into office back in 2000, I think in 15, there have been 2,000 murders in Baltimore City, only 300 convictions. So you're talking about a what, 28% clearance, 28% conviction rate? Oh, well, we got an 85% conviction rate. Yeah, out of those that actually go to trial, out of those that get caught, out of those that do not have their murder case dismissed, 2,000 murders, 300 convictions. When you look at the real numbers, including the dismissals and a failure to arrest and things of that nature, you have a very high recidivism rate. You have a very high murder rate. You have a very low conviction rate, uh, even lower clearance rate, meaning somebody gets killed and nobody knows who does it. In order to clear it, you had to figure out who did it and convict them. You have a very low clearance rate, very low conviction rate. You're talking about drugs, homicide, things of that nature. Some would say, hey, ABL, why are you worried about low-level crimes like drugs and pimping and pandering, things of that nature? See, when you don't convict for these types of crimes, you're going to get a bad quality of life. You're going to have more crime because you got a bunch of dealers out there and the addicts, they're all committing crime. The dealers are doing things in the streets to maintain their corner, maintain their area of the city. They're stealing guns. They're doing other things aside from drugs. The people, you know, people that's not from these kind of areas don't really understand those that kind of grew up in a more sheltered environment or in a rural area, not really inner city like I have, they don't understand it. They don't understand it. These guys are not just out there like it's a pharmacy it's selling drugs at the window. That's not how it goes. These guys are into everything. They're into home invasion, human trafficking, gun selling, drug selling, whatever they can get their hands on, they're going to do. Pimping and pandering, 15, 16-year-old little girls. That's going on in the hood right now as we speak. And when you don't, convict those crimes let alone actually bring them up on charges to begin with but when you don't convict and send them to the penitentiary that kind of behavior is going to continue from the individual a lot because they won't go to jail for it and they know that and then it'll spread like a virus you see other kids and whatnot in the community that see that and then they want to emulate it now you got generations of people on the same hamster wheel unable to get off so if you want any kind of change in Baltimore, if you want any kind of change in these ghetto areas of liberal cities, you have to start convicting people that do crime. It's not everyone in the community that commits crime. So it's not about being racist or nothing like that. No, nah. if somebody is selling heroin every day, go ahead and arrest them. Go ahead and get them out of the community. Most people, most normies are not going to be involved with that. Okay. But the criminals are convict the criminals, lock the criminals up to keep the regular average everyday normie from suffering. That's the reality. So Marilyn Mosby, rather than trying to fight the media and their quote unquote racist coverage of you, how about trying to fight some crime? If you fight the crime and make Baltimore a better place to be, there would be no need for the news to speak of you the way that they do. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? How do you feel about the local news media out there in Baltimore and their coverage of Marilyn Mosby. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it just fair, unfair? Whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, you guys pretty much know where I stand. Baltimore and a lot of cities, not just Baltimore. You're talking about Philadelphia, Los Angeles, New York, all over the place. These bleeding heart liberals are going to be the death of the ghetto. The ghetto is already a bad place to be. But when you have these bleeding hearts out there that don't really care about trying to ensure people's safety, all they care about is just, you know, wanting to look good and getting favorable news coverage. When they do stuff like that, they're going to just make the ghetto continue to suffer. And it's not ever going to stop. It's going to be kind of a perpetual cycle. I, I don't know what the, what the solution is to go ahead and get beyond it, but I know one thing you can do is convict criminals. How about that? Start with that. The ghetto is going to be the ghetto regardless, but when you have people in there that are, 
dedicated to capturing and convicting criminals, you're going to have less crime, less violence, and a more safe place to be. It's just that simple. If you don't do things this way, you're not going to have a positive result. That's just the bottom line. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.